Hello, today we're looking at Luke chapter 9 verses 28 to 36, which is Luke's account of the transfiguration. Now the transfiguration is gloriously strange. It stands out even in the book of the Bible, which is full of strange and glorious events as being particularly strange and glorious. It's a difficult thing to know exactly how to teach about because it's something we can't fully understand. We only can really get glimpses of what's going on. We can't get the full picture. But what I wanted to do today is I wanted to use this drawing board and we're going to try and get down some of the glimpses about the transfiguration and try and see how much of the picture we can understand. Now, if we're trying to see as much of the picture as we can, then we probably need to start with probably the most famous picture of the transfiguration, that painted by Raphael. At the top, we have Jesus flanked by Moses and Elijah. In the middle, we have Peter, John and James. And at the bottom, we have a scene of disciples who gained the faith needed to heal a sick child when the light of the transfigured Jesus shines on them. It's good. I mean, it's really good. I mean, as a piece of art, it's phenomenal. But does it totally capture what's happening at the Transfiguration? No, I don't think it does. I don't picture the Transfiguration like this. So how would I picture it? Well, I can't. I can't fully see this picture in my mind. I have glimpses, but it's so strange that I can't put them together for you. So I've taken Luke's account of the Transfiguration and we are just going to glimpse at it. Just one word from each verse. The passage begins with the word after. It's crucial to understand that this event happened right after Jesus spoke about his forthcoming death and resurrection and that others must take up their cross too. The transfiguration is described in verse 29 and we hear Jesus' whole appearance is different. Those present aren't seeing the human Jesus, they are seeing the divine Jesus. Something so different that it's hard to describe or visualise. Two names appear in verse 30, Moses and Elijah. Now I could speak about how they represent the law and the prophets, but all we really need to know is that their lives were a mission, lived for God, and they were now in glory, which tells us Jesus has a mission that's going to end the same way. A picture of Moses' mission is evoked in verse 31, where we read the word Exodus. And we see how Jesus is on a journey to free all of God's people. And we are learning as much about the people as we are about the God as we journey with Jesus. Then we get a strange word, sleep. The disciples are struggling to keep their eyes open. I don't think that's because they're bored. It's because this is all too much to take. Now, it's important to emphasise they were awake. This wasn't a dream, but it acts like one in so many ways. It's a brief moment which can't be repeated, but is a glimpse of something beyond this earthly life. In verse 33, Peter suggests he sets up three tents. This is fascinating. It shows how wrong we get things. Peter is acting like a human. He is trying to prolong the glimpse of the divine, trying to contain it, trying to make it something more human and less different. But God's dwelling that Moses would know all about comes down from above and surpasses anything that humans could ever build and reminds us this isn't an experience humans can create, but something only God can create. The voice of God says, listen to him. Not what the law or the prophets say, not what your logic tells you, not what your fears say about death. Just listen to him and his words about death and resurrection. And we come back to after. After this event, there was silence. It takes some thinking about. It is hard to visualise how pain and death can lead to something glorious. But this whole strange event is meant to inspire us with hope and give us a vision. A vision like this. Because although I don't think Raphael quite got the full picture of the transfiguration, I don't think that's important. The transfiguration is just supposed to inspire us with hope that there is something glorious at the end of our journey. The most inspiring thing about Raphael's masterpiece was that it was unfinished at the time of his death. 
He died at the age of 37 with this painting by his deathbed. As he died, he was inspired by this glimpse of glory that awaits after this life for those who keep Jesus at the centre of the page.